Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 59. Now, this episode is the amazing Katie Cartwheel. Now, Katie is fantastic. We talked about all kinds of stuff, uh, starting with her time in the circus. That's right. She was in the circus. How sweet is that? And, I mean, she did trapeze. She did tightrope. She did aerial hexagon. She did all kinds of stuff and actually uh, breaks down the process into each one of these skills, which was fascinating because I don't think I've ever talked to someone who has actually worked in the circus. I mean, obviously I've talked to them in the circus, but I mean, in depth, you know, you re- you very rarely get a look inside the tent, if you will. Um, but Katie is also a creature performer. She's worked on the last uh, couple Star Wars movies, and she's fantastic in all of them. Uh, she was uh, Hurrid 327, which is the red droid outside of Maz's castle in Episode 7. She was a uh, she was a caretaker in Episode 8. She was actually the one with the rake, the one everyone thinks about when they think caretakers. That was Katie. She was in there. She has a great story about the deleted scene uh, of the caretaker's party and how she was a... Uh, she may have caught fire. Maybe, maybe not. You'll have to find out. Um, but most recently, she was uh, the on-set performer for Rio Durant in Solo. And we talk about what that costume was like, how she uh, uh, got through the cockpit. She did certain scenes, how the physicality of the character came out through her uh, aerial skills in the circus. It was a great, great talk. Katie is super fun. Um, definitely check her out. So without uh, without further ado... Here is the interesting podcast episode number 59 with Katie Cartwheel. Theme song time. Yeah, yeah. I'm assuming of the circus variety. Correct. Yeah, that's my day job. Right on. Um, yeah, we did a big, um, big event with my trapeze rig. I've got a little trapeze rig, six meters high, and um, we did like trapeze and um, rope, aerial silks. We did a royal theme. Oh, right on. Yeah, me and my three other performer friends. We do it every year together, and it's becoming a bit of a family thing. Sure. Really special little event we do every year. That's so yeah. cool. It was really cool. Oh, and so workshops cool. for the public after each of our acts as well. So we do like a rope act and then do a workshop for the public afterwards in rope, you know. So it was really gorgeous for everyone who was there as well. Sure, sure. Yeah, really nice. I was thinking just the other day, and I don't think I've ever actually talked to anyone who's actually like been a part of a circus before. That's pretty oh. awesome. Well. Yeah. How did you get into that? I got into the circus when um, I was 17. Um, wow. yeah, because I've always had a love for, um, art, drama and, um, sports, gymnastics. Oh, cool. You did that growing up? So, yeah, I did gymnastics when I was growing up. At school, I was really good at most subjects, to be honest with you, but, um, I really loved art and drama and gymnastics, but I couldn't do those for A-levels, so I, can't, I ended up going to an office job for a year. Really? And, um, <laughs> yeah, I ended up going straight to an office job and... You know, and got really bad back. <laughs> of course. Well, fair. Fair. <laughs> I love the irony of the office job is what gives you a bad back, not, you know, trapeze. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, I have fallen on my head once. and um, Oh, no. That, that, and that was off a trapeze. So I have had a trapeze accident. Sheesh. Just the one? Yeah, yeah that, that was the only one that's been ever bad ever. It's not bad. I didn't break my neck, luckily. There you go. That's not a bad record. <laughs> you know, just one no, but then point. I would say, no, I was in this office job and I was like, what am I doing? I'm really not happy. So I went to um, a careers advisor and I said, look, this is what I like. And and um, and then she found like a circus course in London. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that's exactly me. Yeah. yeah. So I ended up going to London and um, I actually didn't end up doing what I was planning on doing exactly. But I got a place, a scholarship with Zippo Circus, which is a traveling circus. Really, and we travelled around um, southeast of um, England, 
for six months and I learned aerial hexagon and tight wire. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. So they, so they really have like everything. Like, you know what you need? The circus. I know. I, wow. I, the, I know that, isn't that weird that the careers advisor was able to actually do that? Do you know why? Because it happened to be a center in England that did like an official course. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if there hadn't have been, she wouldn't have been able to find something like that. Yeah. <laughs> for me on her computer, you know, with her official um lists of things. Right, right. You know what I mean? What an How amazing would you find list. something like circus <laughs> when you're looking for a very uh serious career? Yeah, that's stuff you can you know what I mean? run into. You wouldn't come across it, would you? No, definitely not. What an amazing list. <laughs> I know. I, I wish I could see the software she was using. Yeah, I know. What else is in there? <laughs> I know. What, else, what the tricks have you got up your sleeve? Yeah. <laughs> Card player. Just... Yeah, the next one. Exactly. The next bit of advice will be, um, yeah. yeah. Anything you You should be a magician. Of. That's right. <laughs> I mean, I figured... The funny this... thing is, you know, why not? <laughs> exactly. I mean, it is why a Why are we finding this option. funny? It... Yeah crazy yeah. and it's also like i can imagine very physically taxing as well that's not there's no way what you're doing is easy no and i'm just learning that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm just beginning to come to terms with that right now age 37 fair i'm like oh i actually have to look after myself as well right um, oh you're in the air hmm yeah <laughs> I know, I've just begun to realise, because I've, I go out and do all these jobs, you know, at the weekends. I'm, like, my summer is my high season for circus stuff. Of course. Um, I mean, I always get things throughout the year, but summer is like crazy time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so it will be literally piling loads of equipment, some of it very heavy, into the car, going to the job, setting up, performing, teaching, getting all the equipment down, back in the car, coming back course that and um, not having time a lot of the time to even do a warm-up oh really and oh, um really? yeah because there's no time because i'm doing everything like setting right. up ring up talking to the client getting ready you know and then then performing sometimes wow so wow. um so it's only a very short warm-up yeah sure that so, sounds started... like a solo artist like in a like in a band <laughs> yeah. i mean i guess it kind of makes sense you know yeah. it, it's it is performance art yeah, it is. And it, there's so many. It is, it is a bit like that. Um, you know, it's, that's why it's nice to work with other people. Like yesterday, I had three of my friends working with me. Cool. And I get a few jobs like that that come up, and that's really lovely because we can devise show pieces together. So it's a bit less solo. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure. A little less solo. Although I am a bit of a solo operator a lot of the time, which suits me fine as well. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. So yeah. what was your first act then when you when you went off to the circus for the first time did you get to pick well, or did they give you options well kind of both really um mm -hmm. i did tight wire mm -hmm. tight um, wire was the very first one you're like how's your yes, balance it was and then i performed and then i, I was on in the papers so i actually had like main um, newspapers from the uk and you know like, um the guardian and the daily mirror and then uh I had all the ITV news, BBC news and everything, filming me on my big tight wire moment. <laughs> oh, man. No pressure, though. No pressure, right? I was really wobbly that day. <laughs> <laughs> of course. In more ways than I was than quite one. young. I thought I did very well. Sure. I, I mean, you're still around, so well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a good... Clearly didn't die then. So, good stuff. So, you just got up. Is that the time difference we're looking at? Uh, yeah. You just started... Yeah. A... yeah. It is... What time is it where you are? It is 7 a.m., Mm. Yeah, I make More it. I make it happen, Goodness. Katie. I make it happen. You do. You are up and ready. You know, you got to do what you got to do when you're talking to people such as you. Unintentional <laughs> rhyme. This is why I'm. Wow, it's, uh, it's so was, early. You know, I'm a performer too good. now. I make rhymes. Uh, you make so, rhymes, do you? I mean, apparently, starting right now, it's my new skill. Show me how. Uh, if you will. Ooh, ooh! I sense a rhyme coming. No, I got um, nothing. It's I'm lost. I'm lost. <laughs> it's harder than it looks. <laughs> it's harder than it sounds. It's all of it. It's just harder, but not harder than tight wire. <laughs> so, what is the key to walking a tightrope? Yeah. Don't say balance. Yeah, the key. The is key. It balance? Are we going to go for the key? Yeah. We're going for the key. What, what is key? the key? The key. Okay, so the key. The key is. Here it is. To all you tightrope enthusiasts. You do not. <laughs> right, you don't walk on the wire. What? Unless you you don't walk on the wire. 
Unless you can feel the wire uh, <laughs> under your feet. That All right. makes so much sense. That is the rule number one. Okay. <laughs> Don't step onto the wire unless you feel it first. Fair. Right. Pro tip. Pro tip. Feel that wire. Yeah. You, you, feel it, you feel it with the toes first. So you can, yeah, it's the first standard walk to learn. That Keep makes your sense. feet nice and straight. There's different walks, you know. There's all sorts of different types of walking, jumping. Really? Running. You start you'd start really with a type of walk that's, you know, the easiest to learn first, which is keeping your feet straight along the wire mm-hmm. rather than turned out like a ballerina. Oh, ah, okay. You know what I mean? I do. The turned out like a ballerina is um, the only way you can do running and jumping because really? your feet have to literally grab the, the uh, wire from side on. Oh, you know, so, if you're, that so that your feet literally swoop from the side to grab that wire and um, you're, you're curling your feet around it. Uh, oh. With shoes, with the uh, you know suede or leather soles, so you obviously the wire would just cut your feet that on its own. But when you first own, you go with nice straight feet, and you point your toes onto it. So your toes touch the wire first, Smart. and then you feel it's there. <laughs> then you push your weight forward onto your heel. Yeah, oh, so you feel like it, walking. and then you push your weight. Yeah, it's like walking, but toes first. Yeah. Like toes first. Yeah, toe heel. Toe hill rather than hill toe hill toe. See, this is all um, super interesting because I have zero context for any of these skills. I'm like, oh, wow. we're breaking it down. I've never walked wow, in a tightrope, we... so this is amazing. I see. You can practice this along a curb. I'm going to when right you walk now. down the road. Toe hill, toe hill, and also when you're doing so, okay, mm-hmm. you want to um, you know, push your weight down into that, feel your feet connecting, mm-hmm. but you don't want your arms out like an aeroplane, like gymnastics, because the difference between wire and gymnastics is wire the body needs to be a lot more uh, relaxed, actually. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Whilst you keep the, the line from uh, head to toe straight, mm-hmm. you don't let it bend at the hips and stuff, your arms need to be totally free to move around. Not, But they mustn't go below 180, though. They've got to stop right by head. Mm-hmm. And that's your balance. Mm-hmm. That's how you balance arms. Yeah. Oh, okay. Whereas a gymnast is very much straight arms mm-hmm. in fixed positions, aren't they? But if you do straight arms like that on the tight wire, you end up wobbling at the hips a bit like an aeroplane, and then you'd fall off. Sure. Wow. Does that help? It super helps. Super helps. Okay. I, you painted a great picture. So you did tightrope first, and then where do you go from there? Oh, now I do so many things. It's of crazy. Course. You're like, the world well, is my monster. Um, yeah, I actually, so I had an aerial hexagon. Okay. It's just a hexagon shape aerial piece of equipment, a bit oh. like an aerial hoop. Okay. You know, but it's a hexagon instead. Hmm. Um, the difference with a hoop and a hexagon is that, you know, the hexagon's got like the, the top and bottom flat bar, if you like, which mm-hmm. is, which can be useful with certain tricks. Um, sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I really liked that. They, the, the, the thing I really loved about that was going up high. I love being high. That makes sense. That makes sense. I love it. It's so, oh, it's so peaceful and freeing and exhilarating. That it's actually, beautiful. given your progression of skills leading up to trapeze, the fact that you like being high makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's just lovely. And in the big top, in the in like the traditional big top we were in, they they just they got really high as standard. Because mm-hmm. you know, you'll notice, you probably notice this now. Did you? Do you ever go to the circus? Oh yeah, oh yeah. You do, right? So you'll notice when you're watching an aerial act, it's really high, isn't it? It's super high. They make it really high. And whereas if you go to um, some of the more contemporary indoor circus schools mm-hmm. type things, I don't know if you've ever been to any of those. I have not been to it. No, you school. might want to look. Yeah, more of the theatre based stuff. Or makes sense. Um, um, or any circus schools that are putting on shows, you'll notice that the height's a bit lower. Sure. Oh, I'm not talking Cirque du Soleil here, okay? We're, we'll leave them out for a minute. Uh-huh. Um, I, I just think that, anyway, I think traditional circus has always had a wonderful way of just going, you know, that's really dangerous, and it's really high, and up you go. And that's what they did to me pretty much straight away. <laughs> yeah. The real circus. Oh, it was terrifying. <laughs> I mean, fair, fair. In a really lovely way. Terrifying. I do kind of love yeah. that there's circus schools. Because you don't think that there would be. Because you have yeah, the, you but have there the, should like, be. R- there absolutely should be. 
<laughs> that's like the the uh sometimes you know romantic appeal to the idea of a circus is you just mm. kind of like run away to the circus and then you just kind of figure it out you're like i could throw knives cool over here we need a knife thrower try not to hit the girl on the wheel uh we'll figure it out and it's a lot of free kind of and i'm sure the first circuses were very seat of your pants that guy can throw fire mm. but so it's it's nice that there's schools for it where you can take you know get actual training to do these things absolutely there's schools um popping up all over the place now it's amazing i mean it's yeah in the uk i mean i, I live in the uk so i guess i can mainly just speak for the uk mm-hmm. um because they're in the states aren't you yeah I am and um, where whereabouts are you i'm in florida mm, you're in florida that's nice isn't it yeah yeah most of the time it's very hot, um, but, okay. but other than that, can't complain. Better than snow. I wonder if they've got flying trapeze rig out there. A lot of my friends here who do flying trapeze, you know what flying trapeze is, right? That's from bar to person to back to bar, back to ledge. Yeah, that's one thing. where you actually like let go. And then yeah, grab. there you go. <laughs> oh. well, you actually let go. Yeah, exactly. You do fly. <laughs> you fly. Man. Flying trapeze. So I've done a bit of that. Let's talk. What was your what, yeah, first off? I've, why I'm not I'm not you know I haven't done enough of it to be really amazing. Yeah, <laughs> I mean if you've done it once and not died, that's pretty amazing. Oh no, I did. I've managed to do it out of lines, so actually without the lunge on. What? Yeah, I have managed that. Um, not you know only only a swing and a drop to the net, admittedly. I mean better than um, a drop to your death. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But a swing is very technical. Okay, you might think oh it's just no a few swings, but you have to really swing. Oh sure. Properly. Yeah, yeah. And um there's particular timing with the with the legs that don't always come naturally to people. Right, right. Um it's, even it's to so me technical. I have to really work on that timing and really understand how to get the bar higher. Sure. I'm using my uh my body, hips, legs to swing. Man. And what shape to put everything in. It's like you it's don't realise compl- just how technical these tricks are. No, no, I don't think people do realise just how technical just a swing is, yeah. and then a drop to the net. It's, it was really great, is um, but no, but doing that for the first time out of lines. I mean, because I've done tr- other tricks in lines, like s- a split under the bar, let go, catch the catcher, mm-hmm. get returned back to the bar again. So I've done that with wow. the lunge on. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So I have managed that, but I've just um, I just haven't been enough often. Um. Oh, yeah, basically, the, when you let go or mm-hmm. when you let go of the bar to land in the net or let go of the bar off your trick to then go to the catcher person who's about to catch you, mm-hmm. it's that moment where everything stops, which makes complete sense. You wouldn't let go as the bar's travelling towards the catcher, would you? And still travelling up. Ah, right. You know what I mean? The it, would send you shoot, it, would, it would send you shooting forwards. Right. So you have to let the bar go all the way to the top of its swing and just before it starts going back down again, that's when you release. Oh, the time. So that you go up, not forwards. Right. <laughs> and smash into the catcher and injure yeah. him severely. <laughs> I think it's more scary being the catcher because you have to watch someone either wildly spin it, you know, someone either wildly out of control, okay, who doesn't, a student that doesn't know what they're doing, or just right. someone that's really, really professional and doing like a, a triple. T- sure. And you're like, the timing's got to be. You know, obviously there's timing with when when someone starts a swing and the catcher is swinging. It's all timed. Man. Yeah, but if, it's, if it's a bit wrong, it can be a bit. It can be a really hot, nasty headbutt. Oh, there sure. <laughs> yeah. You know? I can I can see it. Yeah, especially because uh, from the ones that I've seen, you know, the catcher they're like face down, so they don't even see Ooh. the person they're catching until that second. And it's a yeah. man. I I'm so well, clumsy. It, yeah. They they would fall. Every time. I'm not catching anybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know that's my skills. Nice, <laughs> I know. That's why I'm not doing it, because I would let my partner <laughs> down 100% of the time. Oh, dear. So you did, you did, uh, you did trapeze. Which one's the... Mm. So, so far, when you did the, the hoop one, right? You, mm. I'm assuming you did the thing where you, like, spin super fast? Because that seems to be a, a The a thing where thing. you spin super fast. Yeah. I love it. As you oh, can yeah, tell, definitely. I was in the circus, so I know all the technical terms. Um, do you know what? When I learned the aerial hexagon, yep. because some of the tricks I were doing were really actually quite technically difficult, and I'd only just learned them and been trained them mm-hmm. and stuff, and I was going up like seven meters to perform them straight away, or, oh. or 
you know. In the deep end. So I'd be spinning myself on the floor and then the winch would take me up oh, seven right metres, on. right? So the spinning really fast thing, um, <laughs> I tried not to spin too fast on that because I knew that I was going to be taken up quite high. <laughs> See, that is what it's called. And fast <laughs> spinning, if you're then doing very technical tricks, can mm-hmm. just spin you off. So the sorts of tricks I was doing, I didn't really feel comfortable doing massively fast spinning when I was doing that act in Sippos. I do fast spinning now, though, because I tend to be, a lot of sometimes I, I tend to be quite connected to the floor. I could just reach the hoop, but I still can touch the floor. So I'll do some really, really fast spinning and then I'll go up. Uh-huh. And I've, I've worked out a really cool looking sequence where I can go in and out of the hoop and around it whilst it's spinning. It looks lovely when it's spinning. Do you do you ever get dizzy? The, the shapes, um, if, like you just move. You can do some really simple things, but like just move a leg a little bit, and move an arm a bit, and when it's spinning, it looks amazing. When when you're when you are spinning, do you ever get dizzy? Um, you're like, of no, course no, not. No. I'm a professional. I, oh, oh, do you know what? No, I don't anymore. No, because I've got used to it. Because if you do it enough, then you um. Really? Yeah, if you do it enough, you stop getting dizzy. Wow, I didn't know that. You, that, we, oh yeah, we that's found, right. Yeah, you stop. We found one of your mini superpowers already, Katie. <laughs> if you do it enough, you don't get dizzy anymore. You can just spin away quite happily. Wow. The <laughs> only time that's slightly different is when if I'm really tired and I then I then I go through my act late at night, which I have done quite a few times. Yeah, I mean, you and then you I'll be do. spinning away, but I'll be really exhausted because I would have done whatever else I've done all week, and then whatever training I've done before my running through my act. Mm-hmm. And then I'll be spinning away. It won't make me dizzy so much as just feel really sick. <laughs> Fair, <laughs> but it's through tiredness, exhaustion, and running through my act at ten p.m. Right, right. It's from do, burning the candle at both ends, that. not the dizzying actual part. It's no, it's the burning the candle. Yeah, exactly. Fair, fair. What, so, what is the what's the hardest skill that you've learned so far? The hardest skill. That's a nice question, isn't it? I try. You do try. You know. You do. What's hardest? Hmm. Doubles trapeze, maybe. Fair. Doubles trapeze. I'm going to go with doubles trapeze. There's just so much involved in it with timing oh, and I it, love all it. of it. I'm sure the first yeah. time you ever like made the full pass, you're like, "This is it." That's got to be exhilarating. Mm. Well, no, 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 no. Doubles trapeze now, where it's different from flying trapeze. Right. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, doubles trapeze is yeah. the one that no, no, you're yeah, not throwing like... somebody and catching them. <laughs> well, okay, no, no. Sometimes you are, but we'll get to. The, well, we can get to that. Let's do it. Instead of the bar swinging and mm. and you're. You know, and you've got the other the bassist swinging on a different bar. Mm-hmm. So you're releasing your own bar and then catching the catcher on his, you know, his hands on his bar and then doing swung back to your own bar again. Oh. For doubles trapeze, and that's, you know, the beautiful, large, long, you know, rig of flying trapeze. Mm-hmm. With doubles trapeze, it's one trapeze that hangs down. And it, we're not talking about swinging that, that trapeze at all. Right. <laughs> It's a really beautiful skill to work on. And so the catcher or the base can be in a few, just has different base positions. Mm-hmm. So he can be in that typical flying trapeze base position where he's in catches with his hands coming down. I did a lot of training with a person called Ezra from Gorilla Circus. Nice. And he was really tall oh. and um, mm-hmm. really strong through his, because um, he owns um, the, the flying trapeze school. He's done a lot of training. And I'm really small and strong. Uh huh. So we were a really good team, and he was able. We were. He was able to do some throwing and catching, just basing from the doubles to please, you know, without any swinging. And we were playing some really awesome tricks. Um. So if if we, if we were hand to hand, he was able to. We do a little beat, and then he'd throw off my hands and then catch my feet. Do you know what I mean? Oh, nice. So my body would literally fit 180, and then we even managed to get it back the other way. So he's holding my feet, and we do a little tempo, <laughs> little beat, little tempo, and then. Whoosh, so he'd have to pull me up and, and like fling my feet that way and I'd have to just and we'd have to time it perfectly. So then I was um doing a little beat and then lift up an arch and then it was a catch. Things like that were really exciting. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and we were trying we were training this trick where I'd he'd be in catches again, you know, hanging upside down, mm-hmm. waiting for me. And then I was standing up on the bar. So which was basically his knee level, right? Where mm-hmm. his knees are bending in that position. Um and then I just jump backwards. Oh. Hands. So it'd be a straight down drop. Sure. You right, kinda, just with the size difference the of the two of you, you you can use him as your totem pole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a real good match. And I had a really good match with uh, Moira as well, actually. 
who was a girl that I worked with from Aircraft Circuits, and we had we did a run of shows together um, with Aircraft Circus, and um, oh, we wore these great leopard skin costumes, and nice. she was really strong. She was able to base me um, mm. hanging by her feet. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was called ankle hang. Oh. Yeah, so she was an ankle named. hang, which is basically, it's kind of squidging the bar by your calf muscles and then your um, feet are just slotted next to the ropes. It's, it's wow. really hard. And then, yeah, I was, we were doing all sorts of tricks in that position. She's very strong, goodness. <laughs> so, I, I love doubles trapeze a lot. Really, It's really hard to learn. It took a lot of effort, but I loved it because I got to work with somebody else up in the air. Uh-huh. So, um, and that feeling of trusting another person, oh, yeah. it really, that, that, that's, I think that's a key point, actually, working with other people and trusting other people. Sure. Um, with your life. Really? With your life, with your body. So, you know, they drop you or you, if I didn't get the trick right, so, you know, I, both of us will become injured or seriously injured. Right. You know, and that feeling of trusting one another is, is really beautiful. Absolutely. It's beautiful. And if I may just, like, bring that into Star Wars. Of course. You know, um, being a creature performer, one of the key things that makes it so beautiful is that thing of trusting people when you're inside a creature. Oh, yes, of course. You rely on the team around you. If there's a problem, they have to get you out. If you can't see, they're your eyes and ears, you know. Absolutely. I've had quite a few creature performers on and they've all talked about how there's like for each creature, there's a team of people behind it. You know, one person yeah. with the mic talking to you inside of it, a person inside, another person with the animatronics. It's a whole mm. big thing. And it seems like that whole I mean, that Neil Scanlon's entire team is mm. everyone looking out for one another. And it's it's amazing. It's amazing to hear. Yeah. So that's actually a yeah. perfect segue, Katie. Well done. How did you get started into acting? What made you go from I the got circus into to that? that? No, no, I actually got into it through Aircraft Circus. So right on. Moira, who I was doing doubles trapeze with, her husband Alex Frith mm -hmm. rang me one day, and he's you know the director of that circus school. Mm -hmm. where I've done lots of training and performing with them, and he rang me up and said, "Oh, I need a short stilt walker for a f for a film." Wow! And wow. Um, check. I didn't even have, I didn't like even, I wasn't even still walking at that point. I just said, oh, well, I'll, I'll learn still walking quickly. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what film it was for. And then I ended up going along to Pinewood Studios and um, oh. smashing out a bit of still walking, trying different things. And they just kept asking me back. And that's how I got into it. Right on. <laughs> yeah. At what point did you know you were playing a droid? <laughs> yeah. Because I know about who you played. <laughs> about the third time I went in. That's but awesome. then, because I'd never been in a movie um, as big as Star Wars, sure, it Few took quite have. a while. It took quite a while for it to really sink in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but it didn't really sink in until the movie came out. Actually, of course, of course. Yeah, to be honest, you had a great shot. Oh my gosh, here at three two seven. Yeah, had an big amazing red. shot. Absolutely, big red. He had an amazing um, shot. He did walking past. Um, you know, just the biggest movie Part star and Ray, Finn and BB-8, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was amazing. And he was the only creature in a shot as well. So he had a real good moment there. Yeah, oh yeah, 100%. Right in front of Mars's castle. I know, I know. Because he almost got put into um, other shots with loads of other creatures. So he would have, which would have been lovely. Of course. You know, but he might have got a little bit lost. Yeah, you never know. You know, he might have got a bit hidden. But as it was, he got a glorious full body shot walking for about six seconds yep it's a golden time <laughs> oh it's golden time yeah real golden time it's amazing yeah. what was what was shooting like well on that one um yeah mm. oh, so for big red when we finally got him shot because he nearly got shot quite a few times mm -hmm. and um and then for whatever reason like he might have been too uh, you know at one point we nearly put him in inside Mezzas castle in the bar mm -hmm. area and um but jj thought that it was too distracting from the main dialogue right. having this massive <laughs> droid in the background sure another time in Abu Dhabi um, um he nearly got put into um one of the shot in um um you know where Ray went to buy her food 
Really? Okay. Yeah, but the, um, he needed someone to go on really quick. And um, ah, it's quite a long time to get into Big Red. And um, uh, get into the shot takes about half an hour mm. to get in. So um, JJ just decided to keep the cameras rolling, you know, and stick with um, power droids in the background that were quicker to get on and off. Sure, sure. Yeah, so it's easier to stick them in and out. So I did a power droid out there, maybe Dabby. What? I didn't know that. No, I know. Do you know why you probably didn't know that? It's because it's not actually in the visual dictionary, so it's not depicted anywhere. Uh, of but course. it's in the movie. That's important. It's in the back you can see it in the background if it's you there. really know what you're looking for. And That's it's um amazing. it's it's in the background. It's you'd have to know what you look you were looking for to know what it is because it's everything's so rustic and the colours all sort of blend together sometimes. Uh huh. Um, but um, it's in the background as race, yeah, buying some for food. That's so cool. So you were on location. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was amazing. I actually went out to Abu Dhabi, and at one point I went down to the deep desert. Nice. Um, I wasn't doing any shooting down at the deep desert, but I was, you know, watching um, some of the shots they were doing there. I managed to get a lift down there. So because we were on the sand flats in Abu Dhabi, and mm-hmm. some of the shooting was done in Al Qasar, which. Oh my goodness! It was so hot in the rolling sand dunes for miles and miles. Oh, it was amazing. Man, I've had. Oh uh... my gosh! I can't believe they managed to shoot out there. <laughs> it was so dangerous. Oh, of course. You know, I... literally driving through the desert. Amazing. And then carrying the lugabies. I've actually had Tom Wilton oh and Derek Arnold on the show before. Have you? And they've talked about like Neil Scanlon being like, "I want my six seconds. You got this, guys!" And they're like trudging through the sand. And uh, man, yeah, you guys suffer for the art, that's for sure. Oh my gosh, yeah, they <laughs> they really, really had a hard time with that um, logger beast. Yeah, it's, it's so uh... heavy and through the sand. I mean, yeah, operating a creature in the sand is 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 so hard. Oh, I mean, it's heavy enough as it is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Let alone, oh, let's stick it on sand now, shall we? Exactly. And sand, Do you when know you what? move, it doesn't stay. It doesn't. <laughs> so you now want me to take the most heavy thing I've ever carried in my life. And put it on sand now. Exactly. And now you want to add someone else on top of it. And now you want to add another kind of bit more weight with the costume too. Exactly. Let's Crank just keep huge. going with this. Yeah. <laughs> and then and now you want to make and now you want to put me in a really hot desert yeah, I mean, as well. That's Star Wars, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are you crazy? When you know? when I had Tom Wilton on, he talked about how <laughs> he knew he was going to be in the rig and it was going to be in the desert. So he like trained beforehand. So he like would go to the sauna. And like it used to heat, and then like we'd be power lifting and everything. And he's like, the second I got into the Abu Dhabi desert and put the lug of beast on, I realized all of it was for naught. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you, you, <laughs> that's you, so funny. <laughs> you can't really train for the desert unless you're in the desert. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's amazing. Oh, that is a really good point, isn't it? I guess I was lucky because when I did um, Big Red, I was already doing so much training for um, the shows with Aircraft Circus. Right. I was already trained up. I was already at quite optimum performance level. Smart. So Big Red is stilts, and then it's something else on top of you? Yeah, with Big Red, was um, so up on stilts, they were quite tall. And then um, um, the, my, upper, my upper body was like in a shell, if you like. Uh-huh. Um, that was um, So that's the shape, the head, the head of um, Big Red, if you like. Sure. <laughs> we can call it that. So I was actually inside that shell with my arms, and it, it maybe started at my hip level. Oh, okay. Okay, that shell. And inside there, I'd have, I had my hand on two levers, and um, by pushing the lever forward, it made made uh, one of the robot arms swing. Oh. Yeah, so I was operating the um, arms inside the shell. So each time I'd step, you know, so I'd imagine I was walking, so each time I'd um, lift up my left knee, Mm-hmm. You know, to lift up the foot, I would push the right lever forward, you know? Sure. So it would be a posing, as if, like a normal person, we walk with a posing. Right. Um, Our arms kind arms of swing legs, when we walk. Don't we? Yeah. As we walk. So, so, so does a droid, like Big Red. Sure. So his arm swings as the left foot, you know, his other opposing arm swings. So that I also really had to do fun. a bit of tilting side to side, because as, as I lifted up one leg, mm-hmm. um, I had... So if I lifted up my right leg, I'd have to tilt over to the left a bit. Yeah, to compensate. <laughs> to compensate. I think we probably do that when we're walking, right? And we must do. I bet we do. Normal humans. Because we, we, we walk all the time, so it's obvious. But 
why can a baby not suddenly walk? Because they're just falling over all over the place. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> you know, you lift up a leg, you fall over. This is true. You know, because you're suddenly not balanced. Well, you know, so Big Red is no difference. I guess it was just a lot more accentuated. <laughs> sure. <laughs> because he sure. was so top heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he was really heavy. So when, when we actually did the shot, um, it was probably about the amount of heaviness I could um, I could uh, cope with. Um, and actually being out in Abu Dhabi, practicing Big Red out in the sand. Oh, yeah. So oh, he didn't yeah. actually get his moment there. But when I came back to Pinewood again and I was back on solid ground, it made it so much easier. Oh, yeah, you're like, this <laughs> I was like, oh, my desert. gosh, I'm on solid ground. I so appreciate this. Let's get this really good now. <laughs> there you go. It's cake after that. <laughs> and I said to Neil, I said to Neil Scanner and I said, oh, I said, I've conquered him now. So let's get him shot. That's right. You want to you run? <laughs> yeah, let's get him shot. I've That's conquered awesome. him. It took a while to conquer him. It took a lot of hard work to get him right, to be able to walk in him correctly and to get the movement right and be confident up there walking. Uh, I'm sure. Could and you then see? I felt, sorry. Could you see? No, no, I couldn't see. And I, I could only see one little Mourner McPherson, who was my dresser, mm-hmm. fabricator, helper, really lovely assistant, one of them. She fought to have a, uh, a vision point put in for me, <laughs> which. Ah. Um, um, which was just um, at the bottom of the shell, just, um, you know, by my tummy, if you like. Mm-hmm. So I could just see, and it was like this little square. So I could, if I if I pointed my eyes straight down, I could see um, a little bit of the floor, and I could just see the insides of the stilts. Gotcha. Um, so I could just see my feet touching the ground on mm-hmm. the inside. Um, and and that really helped me, because I was just able to see when my feet were, were touching the ground, and that, that was just helpful. Yeah, that's important. Well, it wasn't my feet, it was the stilts, but I was like, you know, it just helps to see as well as with something that heavy. Right, right. Your feet back. You know, it's quite precarious. So for me, it was important that I could see the, the stilts touching the ground. So I had the timing of my uh, tilt from side to side right and all of that. Sure, sure. You don't want yeah. to be the, you don't want to be the giant red droid that's falling over all the time. <laughs> no. I, I, luckily Harrison I didn't Ford. I didn't fall on top of the main characters, so that was good. Yeah, good for you. That's I <laughs> know, no, I managed to get through the um through the hour and a half I think we were shooting for, which is quite a long time to be constantly shooting a really heavy character. Yeah, of course. One that you're completely yeah. inside of. Physically taxing. Good thing you're super strong from being in the circus. Yeah, really physically taxing. I mean it, they take the, the creatures department in Star Wars push you right to your limit. Oh, for sure. um, and over and beyond it, which is really great because you end up being really rewarded by going to places you never thought that you could go. Right. Right. You know, so it ends up um, it being this amazing growing experience. Sure. Which sure. is great. Sure. Yeah. And then I know you worked on episode eight as well. Yeah, that's right. So I was a caretaker. That's amazing. Um, I'm an Ak um, caretaker. Which one? Um, Say the, the one with the, the rake. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. The, one with the rake, the rake that would never be able to rake anything up. Yeah, there's exactly. There's so much space between <laughs> the wooden bits. That's right. Yeah, the rake you would never buy in the shop because you'd look at it and go, "That rake just won't work." That's right. Unless it's a very large piece of driftwood, <laughs> you know, perhaps. Unless there was something large, <laughs> or unless you were ploughing fields. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or, or preparing the soil for seeding. See, we'll find uses for you. Preparing the soil for planting, yeah. That's right. It, when it, when Luke drops the fish, you can you can move that a little bit, probably. You know? <laughs> There's a use. You contribute, you know. But no, but what I used that for in that shot, I was I was raking stones, um, with that rake. Right. I was raking up the stones. I was tidying the stones off the steps, and I was looking and examining these stones to see whether or not they were crystals as well. I love it. Well, you know, because we're on a magical island, don't we? You know, I mean, the power, yeah, you never know, the force, right? right? You never know. I mean, you've got I, the sacred text on that island. That's right. You know, right? You, and so then some this girl is, this shows is magic up. Magic in the air, isn't it? This is like that's right. Power and energy. This is what I love about Last Jedi. It's all about light same. and dark, isn't it? It's, it's so fantastic. cool. Fantastic. I love it. It really is. And then some oh, girl yeah. shows up and starts firing holes in your stuff, and uh, it's rough for caretakers. I see. Yeah, I mean, what, you know what? I mean, we'd have more to say, wouldn't we, about this relationship between the caretaker and Ray? You know, if they'd actually shown all the scenes that we shot. I know. There's you a know, great so, shot um, in a deleted scene where Ray walks by and you just kind of like evil eye her as she walks by. One of the caretakers yeah. does. I was like, this is fantastic. 
Yeah, what about the part? What about the dancing around the fire? Yeah, shop, the where party. there was like 20 caretakers, yeah, 20 of them. And that was our big scene. We did a whole night shoot or two, um, to, to get that shot with, with so, and obviously, you know, we had this, you said earlier, didn't you? Every creature has a team behind them. Imagine 20 oh, yeah. caretakers, oh, imagine 20 teams. That's amazing. The, and the scene the scale, got cut. The sheer scale of this, of the, the production is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Well, because when we were doing that, that shoot around the fire with mm-hmm. the 20 of us, the, the amount of signal interference because everyone was obviously, <laughs> you know, mic'd up with their, you know, sure. sound in the ears, you know, the amount of things that were going wrong. And, cause, and also all the puppeteers who had the um, remote controls to make the eyes blink and the mouth mm-hmm. open and close as well. There's, there's, there's just signals interference everywhere. That's so funny. Constant, <laughs> constant problems with, um, yeah, all of that. That's what you don't realize on the day. It's, oh, no. Oh, no. Keep partying. Yeah, yeah, Keep yeah. Partying. My mouth won't open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm now dying. That's right. And you know, um, so I, I was by the fire at that point. Yeah, and then um, somebody said into my ear, I can't remember who it was that was um, giving me audio guidance at that point. Uh huh. Um, it could have been Paul Casey. Oh, Actually, I think best. it was Brian Herring. Oh, even oh, I better. seem to remember it was Brian. Um, and I think Brian said to me, um. Katie, you're on fire at the moment. Oh no! Um, just stand still. Someone will come put it out. No. So I just, just, I was like, oh, this is great, isn't it? I'm on fire and I can't even feel anything. <laughs> I mean, I no guess idea. it's the better alternative. Can't see, smell, feel, but anyway, whatever it was, got put out, and I, I was none, you know, none the wiser. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, but being on the island, being on island, I mean, it was absolutely stunning. It was out on those gorgeous, craggy cliffs. Yeah, was you it know, filmed we, in we, Dingle? Yeah, um, I can't remember the name of the head that it was filmed. It wasn't in Dingle. It was oh, near uh, Melon Head. Maybe. Yeah, there was different heads actually. There were a few different points along the west coast and one up north. Oh. Yeah, there were all different points that the filming was done on. I think about four different locations. Um, awesome. And I can't remember the name of the head, particular head that we were doing stuff on. Uh-huh. Um, but um, you know, the set looked out to sea. You could see the set from you know the little village that wasn't too far right you could see the winding path and you know the 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 unit base and the trucks going up but you couldn't see the set because it was facing out to sea and there was a a big sort of navy ship circling around stop any paparazzi coming near of course (laughs) (laughs) i know it was really all quite bizarre sure Um, sure. and a helicopter flying up to get great shots i mean which was that's always really exciting having the helicopter go up to get shots yeah i'm sure it makes it seem like such a big movie, which it is, but it just kind of brings it home a bit. That oh my gosh, they're actually flying helicopters up, right? Um, right. While we're shooting, and it just it makes it so exhilarating, um, and it really makes you want to do a good job. Oh, I believe when it. you're in there, so what is... you're like, this is really important to get this right. You know, there's this massive team, sure, um, behind me. There's this massive load of departments all coming together. Um, right. I've got to get this right, you know, and I've got to do my best. Sure, sure. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, when the movie comes out, you finally see the scale of what you've worked on. But, like, yeah, the day of, you know, a helicopter. Yeah, the day of. That's oh, the day cool. of. It's like, right. It's, I mean, with all the, you know, all the creature performers say the same thing. You literally push to your limits about what you can, the weight and the time you can endure being inside a creature. So, for me, it's like literally getting, it's like, wow, let's see how much I can get through. Let's see what points I can go past. Right. How long can I stay here? How long can I swear? swear? And then I started on well, the caretaker. Because I'd done Big Red already. When I did the caretaker, that was like my second go, if you like. Right. And I also I was on I was on solid ground, right? So I wasn't up on stilts. Already. So I was place. like, wow, this is easy. <laughs> you know, I can fill the floor with my feet. You right. know. So I was like, just do anything to me. I really don't care. Sure. Um. So I was able to really embrace it and really really enjoy it and um and have so much fun with the character. Right. Um, Do you have because an I knew just how head? lucky I was to have have my feet on the ground, um, and if I had any difficult moments, like inside, if I was like I might like feeling like I couldn't really breathe, or you know feeling a little bit like I want to get out, you know, because I'm not sure that you know I can really breathe enough. Right. Um, <laughs> I was like. Come on, Katie. You got a little slit there with air coming in. Just <laughs> keep the air. You know, there's a little slit. That's right. That's so all you need. Occasionally. Really. <laughs> so it shuts occasionally. But I'm sweating. And sweat's great. Of course. I'm sweat. You know, sweat's good. It's keep- keeping me cool. 
Yeah. You know, so so the way I got through those moments where I was like, mm, am I all right? Have I got an affair? Um, was by just going, just thinking of the character. So I'd be like, okay, where's my character right now? What am I thinking? What am I doing? Sometimes I'd be walking up the stone steps. So I'd be like, what would I be thinking as I'm walking up those steps, you know? Right. Um, <laughs> you know, walking up there and I'm going to do a look back like, hmm, did I forget some of my washing? I'm like, no, 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 it's fine. I've got to go up here with my rake and, um, <laughs> oh, look, there's some more stones down there. Let me fake those up. Goodness me, it's a bit mucky here. That's oh, that right. Luke <laughs> Skywalker. He really does make a bit of a mess, you know. Um, so <laughs> I'd be constantly having... <laughs> and at the same time, I'd be thinking about everything that Paul Casey had taught us with how to bring the character to life. And he'd be picking up the feet because they have bird feet. Right. So how right. would a bird pick up the feet? It would be this this, this fast, um, sort of quite up motion, wouldn't it? You know, the birds would pick their feet up, 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 you know. So we had to try and um, mimic that. So I was remembering that as well when I was walking up and down these steps. I was like, I'd pick it the feet so there's quite a lightness to the character as well as it being um quite big you know big tummy and stuff so yeah. quite nun like yeah. maternal um you know for sure and it, for sure. you know at that point as well you know it's the first time i had a creature with a head on so learning how to move the head you know learning how just how hard it is to move a creature's head yeah because actually yeah. it's restricted you can't just move you can't just look to the side sure um, like normal <laughs> you have to to move the head just a few degrees, you have to push your own head as hard as you can. So, and so when when I had to walk my, walk the caretaker, so walk the caretaker. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes it's hard to know what language to use when you're talking about this sort of stuff. It works. Um, but, you know, before walking of course. as the caretaker. There you go. Um, <laughs> you, you look first before you walk. Typically, you look and then you walk, right? Right. Uh, this is this is what we do probably naturally all the time as humans. We look where we're going and we walk over there. We don't we're not like robots where we like, you know, we turn our whole Calculate. body and head and yeah. walk. <laughs> do you know what I'm? You know, we're not looking at everyone walking down the street. They walk in a straight line and suddenly the whole head and body moves. Right. <laughs> they go off ninety degrees. <laughs> I mean, I do. I don't know about you, but. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, it seems obvious now that we're talking about it, right? Uh huh. But, when you're in a creature, like we're doing the caretaker, I'm not just going to suddenly turn 90 degrees like a robot. <laughs> but it is so hard to move the head, right? So right. Um, you have to force it for for turning. So it's like, right, I'm going to turn. You have to you have to think, okay, I'm going to turn, so I'm going to move the head and turn. You know, and then you've got to have the foot pattern right as well at that at that right. point. How right. would the caretaker then place the feet to do that turn? Because now. Na- um, it was it was more of a step out to the side. The the stance of the caretaker's feet feet were perhaps a little bit wider. Right. Um, right. But to make that look realistic, the turn how a caretaker would just turn around. It was it was very much placement. Like put one foot down, yeah, and the other yeah. one goes more sideways. Then we bring it back into pattern. So there was a lot of technicality. It's hard to explain actually without physically showing you that particular motion. How would a caretaker walk back and turn? We tried right. all sorts right. of things. Um, as, and that was even before we went on to caretakers dancing, right. you know, around the fire. <laughs> Where it was how would a caretaker walk, stand, look, gesture? Um, sure. Point. What wouldn't a caretaker do? A caretaker wouldn't do cartwheels. Yeah, I did say to Paul not. Casey, please, can we throw a cartwheel in? Because I really want to do a cartwheel in a suit. <laughs> um, yeah. And um, but he was like, I don't think that's very caretaker-like, is it, Katie? Right. They don't have fun, um, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> they have their don't own have brand. <laughs> yeah, no, you can't. You can't. No, they're very tame parties. There's no cartwheels in the nunnery. <laughs> no, no cartwheels. <laughs> but that no, we got through like a whole night shoot. I tell you what, that night shoot with all the caretakers that day. I mean, it has ended up on Battlefront Games or something, hasn't it? It's there's the deleted know. scene is on there in the Blu-ray. Yeah, the deleted. Oh, so we got the deleted scene yep. on Blu-ray. So that's fine. So people can see it, can't they? You, they can. Um, it's a great scene. It, it's so good. It, I, I do understand why Ryan um, took it out, uh-huh. or, you know, because um, I, I thought that The Last Jedi was really well put together and I really loved all the quiet, dark, eerie moments of searching for light within darkness and all of that. I agree. And I do agree that it would have totally spoiled it if suddenly there was this random like, <laughs> caretaker celebration chucked in the middle of what was a very powerful piece of cinema right? sure. um so i totally get it um but i think it was the right choice but 
it's so gutting all the same. Yeah, fair. But that yeah. night shoot was absolutely relentless. It went on for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. And a lot of caretakers were dropping like flies. <laughs> couldn't get, yeah, dropping like flies, couldn't get through it. had to go out of the scene. Oh, no. Um, I'm happy to report that I managed to get through the entire night. That's right, you did. And that's prob- that probably helped, yeah, you know. I mean, and that, that made me feel like, hang on a minute. And actually, by, by the time I got through first, the f- first few hours... You know, we had breaks with the head coming on and off a bit, but we didn't come out costume once. Sure. So no toileting. No toileting allowed. Of course not. <laughs> of course not. Who needs a toilet, please? Who needs toileting? I know I don't. Yeah, but then I was still dancing around with my hand up in the air. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> As dawn broke. <laughs> that's, right. that's That's how you do it. You dance all night, Katie. Yeah, so... that's it. All night. That's yeah. right. Mm-hmm. I, was, I don't know how old was I at that point, 36 or 35. Yeah, still got it. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So, you, you, so you're wearing this head. How is the head in mm. relation to your own? Like, where are you looking out of? Anywhere? Can you oh, see yeah. So the view points through the mouth. Okay. So yeah. it's, it's like um, sitting on your head, the faces. Yeah, well, because inside the head is a skull cap. So uh-huh. the first thing is you wear a skull cap. So your head... You're, you're totally fitted onto a skull cap in there, mm-hmm. and then and then the head uh, of the creature the caretaker is 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 fitted to that cap. But see, so you got that you got this, <laughs> brilliant. You got this head on, and then you're looking through oh, the yeah. mouth. Huh. Yeah. So looking through the mouth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you have a skull cap that's fitted to you. So I'm assuming that's the fittings that go on beforehand are for animatronics like this. So that one's like that is your caretaker. Absolutely. That's amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. The, the, yeah, they're, they're all fitted. You, you're given your own caretaker and you stick to your own caretaker. If um, if you if somebody else had to go into a caretaker mm-hmm. for any reason, mm-hmm. they'd have to have their own skull cap made. Wow, that's and pretty they'd have to be amazing. A similar, they'd have to be as a close size match as possible um, in terms of height and build. Sure. To fit inside sure. the underbody costume and. Um, and the overbody costume, if you like. Man. Yeah. I remember uh, Donald Glover was talking about, somebody asked him what his favorite thing about being in Star Wars was, and he says the fact that all of Lando's clothes were fitted to him. He's like, oh. it's mine. So that made me think of this, that you have a caretaker that is, that's yours. Well done. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. It's it's really, I mean, it's incredible, isn't it? It is. It's, it's it's really magical, actually, and it's it's just really wonderful. It's it's the, it's the detail of all the creatures. Oh, 100%. The, and the the stunning work, you know, from from original concept, absolutely, right through to fabricating and um, the costume on top and the hair on the creatures, the skin on the face, the creases in the face. All the color, the, co- the 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 artwork, and the skill level, and the attention to detail, one hundred percent is absolutely one hundred and ten percent every single time. It's wonderful, and yeah. keeping that. I mean, because you know, if you're walking up um, stone steps and you've got you know set all around you, bits of the skin might come off and get damaged. So you know, the fabricators are constantly having to to fix and repaint and re-glue and re-stick, and things get broken or shape shifting, and, and so it's managing all of that as well going through some really tough sh- hours of shooting so yeah you know sure. the team behind of constantly fixing things as you're going through as well that's what happens when mm. the best of the best working on these movies mm. it's so good absolutely it's so good and it, it shows in the art but then, it does uh, show doesn't it it shows because it's so realistic and that's why 100%. people often think it's cgi yeah i know <laughs> you know like a lot of people thought big red was cgi'd yeah, I did. A lot of people were like I didn't think that was real, and then you and like, I was like, no. The amazing thing here. is, every inch of that shot is totally real. That's right, and it really is totally real. I mean, it's obviously a real droid; it's a person, and they're operating it. But it's just um, it's yeah, it's really it it's amazing, them, isn't it? It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> that's so great. It's amazing, and thank you, Neil Scanlon, for for bit for having such high standards. Really, I know that guy is because a without genius. that driving high standards um, behind. Every split second that you see on, you know, the cinema, the movie. I mean, oh yeah, it's like, wouldn't it be much easier to say, "Ah, you'll barely see it. Don't worry." Right. I do. You, know, yeah. you won't see the back of the head. It's never like that. It's like no, every hair counts. 
Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's insane. And that it's... is the attitude with br- every department. I bring up the, the Lugga Beast because they talked about, I've talked to both the guys that were in it, and they told me that mm. it was like six, either six or seven months of R&D with, on that one creature. And then Neil was like, I want six seconds of screen time. So to think yeah. for six seconds, months yeah. and months and months and months, months. of work. And yeah. Incredible. I'm a huge, Neil Scanlon is a genius. And he is a genius. He is, it's true. It's, you know, he really is. And the way he keeps his team together is, is yeah. you know, takes a lot of skill. Absolutely. And um, people, people skill. 100%. Person skills. Uh, exactly. And another cool thing you that know. he does is like he, he seems to be very loyal as well. Like if people mm. turn up and they do the good work, uh, a lot of the creature performers, yourself included, keep being brought back, which is great. Yeah. It's so cool because it adds even more of like a family aspect to this department. Yes. And uh, it does. they brought you back for a, for a little movie that came out recently. Uh, yes. You worked on Solo, but you, yeah. didn't, you, didn't, you didn't just work on Solo. You worked on a character that... I personally immediately was obsessed with. And uh, Really? What did you dude, think of um, him? Rio Durant. Yeah. The second yeah. I saw him, I was like, because uh, I'm a big alien creature guy. I, it's just yeah. one of my favorite things about the movies. And I was like, is that is that a four-armed monkey alien? Whatever it well is, done, I'm for yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah I'm so four-armed into monkey it. mole. Yeah, I'm into it's all like... of it. <laughs> yeah. So how, how, was, how was that like? How did he ask you to come back? Talk to me. How did Rio come to be? Wow. You know, it was amazing. So I got asked to come in mm-hmm. um, and um, to do Rio. And and he said, you know, it would just be to do a bit of um, um, body work, um, really. There was also a puppet version of Rio, which you might not know. What? Um, <laughs> there was um, initially Rio was going to be mainly um, performed by four puppeteers. Really? Um, really? Two of which were Brian Herring, um, Dave course, Chapman, and um, and um, so they were at, try operating Rio. Four of them. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. How One hard for that each was? arm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and I was just going to do um, any stunt moments. Um, there's a moment where Rio switches seats. Yes. In the yeah. in the hauler. Where he's he's, yep. he's swung the hauler and he switches seats and that's a stunt moment um, where I literally had to swing on a bar over to the other seat. Nice. Um, nice. And when I did that stunt, there was a clear drop down because um, they they filmed it from below. Right. So right. I, I was on a line for that. Of course. You have to be, and it was, it was, you know, because even Rio's a heavy suit. Right. And right. and um, you know, not much vision and air and all of that going on at the same time. A lot of restrictions with the costumes. So it's quite hard to do a simple swing across right. to a right. seat. You know, it's not just, it's not, it's not like just like being in a playground where you're just swinging on a bar. Right. You so know, you, you weren't a lot in, of restrictions. Uh, you weren't in one of the green vocab suits. You were actually in like, no, his suit. No, no. It was actually our full, full costume, hands, um, extra feet. arms and everything. The extra arms. We tried all sorts of different things for Rio. Mm-hmm. Um, we because um, eventually it ended up that I ended up doing all the shots um, nice. eventually, nice. Um, which was really lucky for me because I got to do all these amazing scenes and really um, get to know so many people in the other departments quite closely and how they all work um, together, um, right. which right. was a really great experience. Um, learning how all the departments come together. Mm-hmm. Um, we tried with a couple of puppeteers behind me, Lynn and um, Claire. Um, they they came in to do the other arms. Um, and nice. sometimes that worked and sometimes it didn't. And I think in the end, they mainly CG- CGI'd those back arms in. Uh-huh. Um, so uh-huh. the two front arms are mine. That's awesome. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Man. Yeah. Man. It's amazing. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it so is. when Neil pitched this to you, was he like, here's the deal. We got a little monkey guy. You can mm. do circus things. Is That's that right. Way? Exactly that. So so I, I ended up coming in for rehearsals because mm-hmm. um, the costume hadn't been made yet. This was a concept um, area. Mm-hmm. Um, so I basically um, had been given a frame to work with. Okay. It's like a had my own playground in the um in the workshop it was fantastic that's awesome <gasps> made of um scaffold poles yeah oh, so nice. a frame oh, made of nice. scaffold poles we were imagining imagining it was the inside of a ship oh, um 
there was a little um, table there that someone had put together. We were imagining that was the dash board, you know, or oh, the nice. control panel. <laughs> you know, we were imagining there might have been buttons up a bit higher. So, so um, you know, um, there was some woodwork made by um, someone from the workshop, you know, like button pressing. And I, would, I was actually swinging around on this frame and moving about on it. And coming up with different ways to move. I was hanging by my knees. I was hanging by my feet. Nice. Um, <laughs> swinging from one area to the other. Um, and and gradually um, the costume started to be made. And I would be trying all these different things with a bit of costume on. Then with a head on. Mm-hmm. Seeing what I could come up with. Um, and that's when my circus and aerial skills really came to play. Because I, I'm really used to moving my body about aerially. Um, so I was able to be very creative about the sorts of movements that I could come up with. Right, um, right in that space um and then um then it moved then it kept on moving you know as as the months wore on um the frame was was built for the at hauler um in exact dimensions mm-hmm. um so then i came into a different frame that had been built um with you know sort of exact floor measurements exactly where the seats would be how the seats would be moving um, because the seats were able to move forward and backwards and side to side. Oh. So we were playing around with, okay, if the seat was over here, if I had to move over here with the seat, then be closer this way. And where exactly do the bars need to be above my head? How do I swing from one seat to the other seat with these bars? Sure, um, sure. Um, and then I ended up being that, no, just to, to swing over, I needed to stand up on the seat first to reach the bar because I couldn't physically reach the bar from a seated position. <laughs> right. So I had to work out a way, where do I put my hands on the control and see how do I manage to lift my feet up onto the seat Mm -hmm. to then swing over how do I then land and jump down in a really fast dynamic fashion as Rio would do when he's battling with the ship you know quickly trying to get to the other side to carry on firing or or flying you know how do we keep that exciting and moving whilst dealing with uh, a costume that's restricting and not very much space to work in because you know, inevitably with all these things, the, the space that I was working in gets smaller and smaller right? Um, right. and um, more and more limited. Um, the costume becomes heavier and heavier and more restrictive as, as the layers of the costume get added on top. The mm-hmm. zips on the legs, you know, um, the shoulder um, um, bits where the extra arms came off um, gave me a lot of restrictions in terms of being able to turn the head or turn me or or able to turn my shoulders to face behind me there was a point in the seat where I had to turn around and shoot a marauder yeah Um, and again that seems quite a simple thing to do just 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 look behind and and reach an arm behind right simple Mm -hmm. um and 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 shoot but no it's actually it was incredibly difficult because my shoulder and my shoulder angle was compromised by the shoulder joint for the additional arms which even though the additional arms weren't on me um, um, at that point, the shoulder joint for the arms was still there because oh. when they did, it was still there because when they CGI'd it, they're going to have to, they've got to have the, the the angle of the costume all right to right. be able to pop right. those arms in, you know. So I still had to cope with those restrictions. So I, the way I coped with that was I actually put a hand on the um, the steering. Uh, I don't know what do you call it, you know, like a yoke. Steering like a yoke. Belt. The yoke, thank you. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. Yoke. I'm here to thank help. Thank you very much. It was the yoke. <laughs> I put one hand on the yoke to allow me to push myself around to get that shoulder angle and then fire, bang, bang. And um, in the stunt department taught me how to, to do realistic firing so there's a bit of, you know, recoil. Yeah, the shot, yeah. You know? Shot. A great shot. So I mean, good. doing that was, was thoroughly exciting. And actually getting the gun, right? Yeah. Like the gun. The gun was in my holster, right? What? But I couldn't get it out of my holster quick enough. Oh, no. It was on the right-hand side. I had to get the gun from my right-hand side, bring it over to the left, turn around and shoot. But I couldn't get the, the gun out of the holster. It was trapped in there, and it wouldn't have been quick enough, and it would look really <laughs> clunky. So we had um, a puppeteer. We had Lynn stationed down there um, out of shot, and she passed me the gun. And even that gun pass sometimes didn't go so well because it had to be really quick. It was like, it was like, look, oh my gosh, it's a marauder. Quick, grab the gun. Ah, bang, bang, you know. Um, but some, if, if, my, if my hand, which obviously I'm wearing a, um, Rio's hand, so it was a little bit more chunky than mine, mm-hmm. a bit more sticky than mine as well. So couldn't, um, could feel quite a lot actually, but not as much as my hand. So I've got to get the, the hand exactly in the right place in that gun really fast. Mm-hmm. And, go, and I couldn't see, obviously. What I was there, I couldn't I couldn't look down and watch my hand going in because the vision with the head on wouldn't allow it. 
Right. Um, so right. it was um, that was a real nice moment of teamwork there with um, with with Lynn and I was doing that gun pass. That's amazing. Um, so you had Rio's head on you and the costume. Mm, I Basically, did. everything shy of the two extra arms, you were Rio um, on set. That's right. Everything. Wow. Now the head. I mean, at first uh, when I was doing, I went out to the Dolomites in Italy. Um, and there was the, the the head thing went through a bit of an evolving process, really, because um, at first I had um, the full head on, all the hair was attached, um, and um, I had eye eyes in, like sort of glass eyes, uh-huh. you know, uh-huh. makes it look like Rio's eyes, and I had a, and a bit of viewpoint through the mouth, and there was robotics um, inside the head, you know, to make the eyes blink, mm-hmm. the mouth mm-hmm. opening close. So at first, that's how it was. Um, so I was uh, doing the campfire scene with, you know, like Han, Chewie, Beckett and Val. Yeah. The yeah. Dolomites. And that was my first shot because we, we did that quite early on. Um, really? Out in the Dolomites. Really? A little bit of shooting. We then did lots more back at um, Pinewood, actually. But mm-hmm. um, the first bit of shooting I physically did for Rio was out in the Dolomites. Wow. Um, wow. And with that head on. And, and that was also the first time I met uh, Woody Harrelson. And, um, so cool. So cool. I already knew Chewy. I already knew Jonas. He's the, um, best. He's the best. So that was nice. Um, so I was kind of thrown in the deep end, really, there up in the Dolomites, because um, um, it was the first time I'd worked with these main characters. Mm-hmm. And um, also I couldn't really see. And um, and I, w- I was being asked to do a lot of jumping around and fetching things from all over the place in the campfire and coming back. And I couldn't actually see. And actually, what oh, no. Rio, I couldn't actually, no, but I couldn't see because I only had like a little viewpoint from the mouth and the mouth's obviously closing quite a lot. Mm-hmm. And you actually can't, when you've only got a slit, I was, I was having to do some quite complicated movement, picking up frying pans, um, you know, doing cooking, adding food, oh, yeah. trying to twirl, oh, yeah. trying to juggle things at the same time. Because he's meant to be like a bit of a juggler and a chef that can flip things around. And he's, he's you know, he's either a, a real great intergalactic chef, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I imagined... Uh, Rio's, you know, he, he'd he love to have, um, you know, cooking places all over the galaxy, you know. Absolutely. He's been doing this for a while. This is passion as food. Yeah. You know, yeah. so he's real nimble and he, he's, he's acrobatic. He can jump up onto the side of the, uh, up onto the side of this trench, you know, to fetch a pot or a pan, leap back down, you know. Yeah. So I was yeah. trying to do all of this movement without a lunge. It was really slippery because there was real snow. There was rocks and snow and I couldn't actually see. Oh, no. So <laughs> that didn't work so well. You know, sure. Because sure. Um, there was just there was too many limitations. You can't really juggle and leap and do all this stuff when you've only got a slit of vision. Oh, sure. Um, sure. It's actually it's impossible yeah. um, to yeah. you know to get that right. It, it's possible to an extent, but it just doesn't. It's not fluid enough. Right. Um, it has to look fluid. Yeah, not fluid enough. Not good enough for Rio. Rio really needs to be dynamic and excellent. Uh, and that was the challenge. Was like, okay, so. Um, then what happened was, um, as it became more apparent that the body version of Rio was going to be used rather than the puppet version, mm-hmm. Neil started to look quite carefully at that problem um, with the fact that Rio needed to be um, needed to have enough vision to be able to do um, um, shots where he, you know, even flying, you know, and, and pressing buttons on the yoke, reaching over to press buttons, going up to the bar, mm-hmm. had to be um, really on point. Um, and there needed to be some vision there. So he actually managed to work out a way to cut out the eyes of the face. Really? So yeah. um, and and so that was going to be. So I I actually I actually got some vision, which was amazing. Nice. <laughs> nice. No, I know. I felt so jammy. I was like, <laughs> this is. I mean, I'm in the most jammy position now. I can actually see. Right. You know, and that right. that changed everything for me. The minute I could see was the minute I was able to perform Rio um, really, really well. Game on. Because I was able to... So so I still couldn't see amazingly well. You know, my vision was still compromised because I was wearing the head. The eyes were cut out um, in one piece, yeah? So they were were cut out, if you like, in a number eight shape, if you imagine. Right. Right. If if you can sort of imagine what I mean, going a cut across the bridge of the nose, you know? Right. Right. So I I had that lovely bit of vision. So I was able to... um, you know, um, to to really play Rio well, and and um, and then when I was in the campfire scene, um, 
it was still I still couldn't see straight down and see to the side. So it's still there were still moments where things were difficult and tricky, but I was able to manage it much better, which was perfect. You killed um, it. And that, yeah. that lent what I was able to also do when I was able to see was I was able to interact with the main characters better. Right. Because I was right. able to feel what they were doing. Um, because when you're trapped inside a, a a creature without being able to see, it's you you can't really gauge um, the energy or the emotion that's going on around you. Sure. Because you sure. can't see anything. You're blind. And you can't blind. hear anything, right? So if you can't see and hear, how are you supposed to act right. with right. people and interact with them? The only way you can then interact with people is if someone's in your earpiece saying, uh, you know, Beckett's looking at you now. You need to direct your gaze to Beckett. Right. 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 And then you have to get that gaze spot on without knowing if your eye line's perfect because you can't see. Mm-hmm. You see what I mean? You can only see through the mouth, so you might miss the, the eye point slightly. Um, so once those eyes were cut out, I was able to, right, I'm looking at Beckett now. We're having a moment because there was a moment where we cheered. Yep. Um, I don't yep. think that, that particular moment actually got in, but I was able to look him eye to eye, do the cheers, really feel. And there were some really quiet moments in that campfire scene. There was this this, this really emotional moment where um, Chewie is... Um, saying about, you know, how he's he's lost his, his tribe, you know, his family. Right, right. Um, and it's really sad. It is. You know, when it I was is. out, it's, it's a really poignant moment. And um, and we all have, we it was a really sad moment. And we all had to be very still. At that moment, I kind of really still, not really doing anything, just soaking in what Chewie's just said and, and, and feeling the importance of having a tribe having a family around you and a team that you're working with and, uh, and then sitting there thinking, this is my tribe, you know, this is, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is my family. And, um, those moments, um, I was really able to feel when I had that, that, that bit of vision. Um, whereas when I was out in the Dolomites with the full head on with, um, the robotics making all these crazy noises, not being able to hear or see, it was impossible <laughs> to get that emotion across. You know, right. it was right. it was to the detriment of the performance of the other characters, you know. Sure. sure. Um, because there was some. It was because of the amount of intimacy going on um in those scenes, it was so important. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. I did have a question. When Rio mm. goes up and then he pushes the lever with his foot, was that you? He pushes the lever with his feet. Did you, oh, the lever pressing thing. Yes. Yeah. That's those amazing. Are my feet. That's such a those good are my moment. Feet. Yeah, we. I was talking to somebody uh, the other day about about Rio, and I said the moment that seemed the most Rio to me was that little bit where you jumped up and then you pushed the lever with your foot. I was like, that's it. That in a moment, he's all over. He's flipping. He's doing all these switches and just yeah. the the idea of using your foot to to push a lever. That's I was it. Like, beautiful why wouldn't he use his foot because actually if you you know if you look at monkeys monkeys swing on their feet exactly and actually something i did a lot of rehearsals with i wanted to try and get that 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 across with actually he could hang by his feet and i tried all sorts of things to have moments where he's hanging by his feet and um and uh, we did a lot of that during rehearsals i tried using straps so that i was actually hanging upside down with my 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 feet strapped to a bar oh nice so i was trying to create a swing down the um down the hauler there was a moment where rio might have swung you know swung down the hauler to press the button and then swung back up to the seat again right right um so how would rio swing would he would he swing hand um hand swing like hands on a bar uh-huh. swing um swing the feet up to another bar and then the hands release and then you do a full swing back up to the next bar so i tried to create that um swing with rio um using great. straps and techniques yeah and but yeah, so the little swing with the button press, yeah, absolutely. And actually, swinging in to press the button is quite because as soon as you swing and touch, you want to swing back. So to sure. actually get that control of swinging, being able to touch the button, you know, realistically enough, just have that moment before you got to swing back again because momentum is momentum, you know. <laughs> absolutely. <And you're laughs> you know, like, it doesn't cease to exist just because you're. You know, in a costume. Absolutely, mm. it was a great, it was a mm. great moment, and you did a phenomenal job. And uh, can Thank you, you. we've been talking for well over an hour now, so this was fun. Brilliant. Yeah, I hope you've had a yes, good time. Yes, this was really fun. Thank you so much um, for having me on your show. Absolutely. Thank you for coming on. It's a, uh, it's, it's always fun. I always think that I always say that the most valuable thing you can give someone is your time, and you didn't have to. And uh, yeah, like I said this was really cool. This was really, really fun. 
Yeah, it really was. Rio was absolutely amazing. And watching him come to life on the screen and and having all those memories of all those shots coming back. Um, so much of what we did made it in with Rio. Cool. Um, you know, whereas obviously a lot of the caretaker stuff got cut. A lot of most of the things that we did with Rio made it in. That is um, fantastic. Yeah. And a what an experience. A testament to the work that you did. Yeah, it was a, a, a full year. Yeah. Well, no, pretty much. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So I have Great. to before before anything, I have to ask you, where can people find you online? Um so yeah, I've got I've just made a new Facebook page cool. called Katie Cartwheel, which is a public page. Um so, because I know that, that there might be quite a lot of people that are interested in hearing more about Rio and, and yeah, things the things that are going on. And this, well, I'm so I've got Katie Cartwell page, and then I've got a Circus Passion page. Yes. So I thought, well, I'll try and keep um, separate them slightly. So if you're interested in the circus stuff, go check out my Circus Passion page Fantastic. on Facebook, yeah. or interested in the in the film stuff, go check out my Katie Cartwell page, um, and also check out my website, which is um, CircusPassion.co.uk or KatieCartwell.com. Both goes to the same um, website. Um, there's lots of stuff on there, lots of pictures and um, information. Perfect. And stuff about the work that I do. Right, yeah. on. right on. I love Yay. it. This was great. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Thank and... you. And... Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you enjoyed it, stop by iTunes, give it a five-star rating. It really does help push the show to the front of the algorithm so that more people can find it. Uh, if you'd like to follow me, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff as Jedi Brian. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. So until next time, be well.